Hey guys, Rewind Mike here to bring you another fantastic review. Now, as I said, the month of February is my one year anniversary on YouTube, so I was going to be bringing you a bunch of reviews on games made by Capcom for Disney on the NES. Now, the third installation in this month long extravaganza is Chippendales. Now, this was one of my favorite games growing up as a kid, but unfortunately, I was never able to actually get my hands on a copy of it until I was much older. So, you know, we're just going to jump right into this, and I hope you guys enjoy it. Chippendale Rescue Rangers is one of those games I never had as a kid, but always asked for. It was based on one of my favorite cartoons growing up as a child. It starred Chip and Dale, who were two chipmunks from back in Disney's Amazing Error. They start a detective agency with their friends, Gadget, who is very smart and amazing with technology, and Monterey Jack. He is the brute force of the bunch and loves his cheese. And finally, we have Little Zipper, who was always often too small to do anything, but always helped in the overall picture. Although small in size, Zipper had the biggest heart out of everyone. The main villain is a mafioso-style tabby named Fat Cat, who was always trying to kill the Rescue Rangers any way possible. This game doesn't lack on the story aspect. It meets the expectations of the show. The little girl living next to the rangers lost her kitten. This sounds like the perfect job for the gang. Gadget decides to go ahead and scout, while Monty and Zipper are sent off to find some mechanical dog that has been spotted in the park. Fat Cat uses this as a trap to lure the rescue rangers out of hiding, and in the meantime, he captures Gadget and plans on using her for his evil inventions. Now it's time to assemble once more and try to rescue your friends from the paws of Fat Cat. Since Chippendale is a platforming game, it's easy for any one or two people to pick up and play. Although I feel it's better as a single player game, cause the collision on the player sprites is messed up and you'll be bumping into each other and throwing one another almost all the time. The controls for the game are quite simple. Oh, that doesn't mean it's going to be easy to run through though. This is a Capcom game after all. There is no password system, so you must beat the game in one play. You only have three lives and a certain amount of continues to make it through each stage. Every enemy does one full heart of damage, so be mindful of your surroundings. Upon starting up the game, you'll notice a ton of boxes and apples laying around the stage. You should start getting used to throwing those boxes now. The first enemy we see is a mechanical dog, and he's ready to chop on you. While progressing through this stage, there's a ton of platforming to be done, and that can be said for the whole game really, honestly. The boss here is some sort of tower of brushes. All you have to do is throw the red ball at the green ball a few times to win. This is almost how all boss fights will go. Stage 2 will have the chipmunks right in their element, the treetops! They're some of the worst enemies in this stage. It's a the flying ninja squirrels. These little bastards fly in from the side and come right at you, so make sure to remember where they are. Or carry a box with you at all times. At the end, you face off against the Owl King. Again, fairly easy to fight, just dodge his feathers and hit him with the red ball. Here we find ourselves in a diner. And go figure, it's full of rodents and mechanical mice. Watch out for the popper mouse in here too. He will show his party favors all over you. Moving along the stage, you come up to these water faucets, which I always thought was a cool function and very notable. You also have to cross over some pots of boiling water that will take a life from you if you fall in them, so be careful. You might want to watch out for the doppelgangers here too. Just kill everything that isn't you or your friend. When we make it to the kitchen, we have to fight a toy spaceship. Again, hit it with the red ball and take it down. But watch out for those pesky little alien blobs though. They can make the situation all sticky. After clearing out the diner, we find ourselves in a toy store and something has a few of the toys in an uproar, so there is no time to play around. On top of deadly toys, you have to watch out for these evil boxes that jump at you. No big deal though, you can tell them apart. Regular boxes are a brown color, while the evil ones are more of a red color. 
this stage has the most diverse bunch of baddies. The jack-in-the-boxes on this stage are easy to deal with. The bobbling toys can be a pain. When you hit them with a box, they spin in place, so make sure to move underneath them quickly. When moving through the stage, you come across these on-off switches, which need to be all turned to the off position to get rid of the giant balls rolling along the ground. The final guard here is a giant mechanized robot of death, but he only really spits rubber balls. They still hurt though, so dodge them and try to hit the two cannons on his chest the best you can to beat him. The next stage is like a wilderness park or something. I'm not really too sure. The first enemy you bump into here is some sort of cocoon looking thing, but inside it looks like a human baby? So I don't know what Fat Cat's up to here, but he wins. I'm done. Game over. Review over. Dude, it's just a game. Come back and finish the review. I mean, what kind of twisted cat does that to a person? <sighs> Watch out for certain sections of the fence, as it is falling apart and will damage you. Inside of some of the bushes, you will see eyes. Watch out. Uh, these are bush bugs, and they will jump out and lunge at you if you get close to them. At the end of the path, you will find a little house. Inside is a fish that is electrified. Battling him can be a pain. He shoots out bolts at like a 45 degree angle, so make sure to dodge a lot. But don't forget to hit the fish as well. Now, we find ourselves in some sort of ball factory. This stage focuses on the platforming aspect of the gameplay. You jump across a ton of gaps to start, all with balls dropping down. The ceiling is low though, so make sure not to hit your head here, because if you do, you will more than likely drop right down into a pit. Only one enemy is on this stage. It's a roided out chicken! That punches boxes. Stay out of his way, and he will just keep it moving. This next area of the stage is a nightmare and something straight out of Mega Man. It's a vertical climbing tunnel with platforms that extend, then retract. Trying to climb up this part with two people is impossible. No boss on this stage, just an exit at the top. Finally, we make it to the hideout of Fat Cat, the casino. A new enemy is on this stage. It's Wart, the pimped out Lizard G. His attack is throwing his fly ass top hat at you. It's not the hardest thing to avoid, but there are certainly areas where it can be troublesome. Everything can be killed with a box though, so keep yourself armed. The next area of the stage is littered with pits and these bugs that fly at you. If they hit you, it will cause you to fall back. Sometimes that means right into a pit. Fat Cat can be a real pain, until you figure out he can't hit you if you stand in one spot. Then it's all downhill from there. Once you beat him, you rescue Gadget, but she regrets to inform you that your fat cat is in another casino. With three stages left, the chase is on. The chipmunks race through the sewer in an attempt to catch up with fat cat. Nothing too notable here. There are these crabs that spit bubbles out of their claws, so just make sure to avoid all that. The flying ninja squirrel make a return. It's also on another vertical part. This can make it hard to get away from them. No boss on this stage means we can just walk right out and move to the next. Right at the start is a clusterfuck of bugs in mugs. Mug bugs! And also some pelicans who think it's funny to spit your boxes back at you when you throw them at him. Make boop, the people in the USA. Make boop, the people who live in the UK. Make boop, the people in the country of Europe. Make boop, everyone around the world. Just this little bastard makes it really tough to get over some of the fans in this stage when they're already blowing you back. You might want to watch out for the spike traps here too as they can be a real pain trying to avoid them with the wind effect. The caterpillar is the toughest boss in the whole damn game. There is no clear way to beat him without getting hit. We made it to Fat Cat's secret hideout. The song on this stage is by far one of the best on the NES. I used it on one of my other reviews. Can you guys tell me which one? Anyway, I would like to say this is a hard stage. 
but I can surf right through it, like a champ. It's a really close quarters area, and they've put as many enemies on the screen as they can here. There's also one final enemy we haven't seen yet. It's the Gangster Weasel. He shoots his plunger at you. The annoying thing about him though is the fact that he takes two hits to die, so box management and the ability to dodge is required here. Traps are set up, but they are easy to get by. Just dodge them. The ones in the final stretch have to be switched off with a box, just like in the diner stage. The final showdown, no holds barred match is with Fat Cat and it's time to take him down but he decides to bring a cigar as his weapon. He flicks ashes at you and does it at random. The best way to beat him is to just go at it and don't quit. There's no one way to beat him like the other bosses. So what'd you guys think of my third review? Um, now I'm, I'm not too sure what's going on with the, the last review for the month because I'm having some trouble on um, like writing the script and stuff like that and I can't quite put it out how I like to so it might not be out by the end of the month and I'm not going to promise a date for it but I am still going to work on it so that will be coming up shortly I like I said I can't promise it though by the end of the week um but yeah I hope you guys enjoyed this I hope my whole back catalog of videos can you know fill your time until you know that video does come out and uh yeah thanks for watching as always I'm Rewind Mike and I hope you enjoyed